GBTV is brought to you by Grand Blank CTE. This year has been difficult for every sport, including the girls swim and dive team. The team has fought through these hard times and tried to come out on the other side, and they have succeeded. For the final conference league meet, the girls continued their winning streak, taking home the conference championship trophy. The conference meet is the final championship where the whole team is able to showcase all they worked for in the past four months. The Bobcats took first place in 5 out of 12 events and scored a total of 658.5 points, blowing away the competition by over 40 points. The team experienced many personal bests and some even achieved times that qualified for the state meet. However, the ladies swim and dive team was upset to hear that their state meet was to be postponed until further date. They hope to exhibit their skills and training as well as to get all state at the final meet of the season. Despite all the hardships this team has faced, they have never stopped laughing and having fun. They have made many memories together and plan to make more at the state meet and next season. Good luck, Bobcats. Hey everyone, it's Celine. I started Kind to the Mind because mental health isn't talked about enough. It's not, especially right now with everybody being trapped inside of their houses for weeks on end, staring at screens. It's all just so weird and unfamiliar and it brings up a lot of like anxiousness and sadness. And I think there needs to be a comfortable place where we can talk about that. I want people to watch the show and maybe understand mental health a little better or feel less alone that they feel like that because I know it can feel like you're the only one that feels this way sometimes, but you're not. You're not alone. And this is what the show hopefully does. So welcome to Kind to the Mind. This week we are going to start something that I'm probably going to do every week. It's called Song of the Week. And Song of the Week is going to represent whatever mental health disorder we're covering that week. It's going to be a song that either talks about that mental health disorder or helps you get through it in some way. I struggled picking the song of the week this week. I literally have a whole playlist dedicated to when I'm feeling anxious and I wanted to include a lot of songs but I had to stick to my song of the week thing. I chose Breathe In by Ariana Grande. That song's good and it's good because it talks about anxiety which a lot of people are starting to talk about but haven't been talking about really and that song really just makes you realize like Hey, yes, the world is on your shoulders. You feel like you're crumbling. You feel like you're about to fall, but you're still breathing. You're still here. You're still doing it. I hope you guys check that song out and maybe it will help some of you. 
and now on to facts with Kelly talking about our topic this week, anxiety. So we are joined here by Kelly today with Facts with Kelly. Kelly, if you want to introduce yourself, go hey, right ahead. Hi. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kelly Thompson, and I am the owner and therapist of Fieldstone Counseling and Wellness Center here in Clarkston, and I'm excited to be with you today. Yay. Okay, so let's get started with some questions we have for you that you can maybe fill in with some facts. So um, what are some telling signs that you might have anxiety? Well, first, I think it's really important to remember that everybody experiences feelings of anxiety from time to time. And anxiety can be described as a sense of uneasiness or nervousness, worry, fear, or even dread about what's going to happen or maybe something that is going to happen in the future. Um, it could be like being nervous for a job interview or worried you're never going to go back face to face at school or applying for colleges or a big test that's coming up. A diagnosable anxiety is when that sense of worry becomes a feeling that occurs more frequently and more intensely. And it's kind of out of proportion to the present situation that's happening, but we know it can affect somebody's daily life and happiness. Um, a lot of times here at the clinic, I see people who you know, worry a lot about things that they can't control. Um, typically, sometimes they think about um, the worst things that can happen, um, but we can see people who come in with chest pains or headaches or tired, tight muscles, um, inability to sleep, and even panic attacks. Thank you. And then um, my second question for you is, when's the best time to start seeing someone to help with the anxiety that you might be experiencing? I think it's important to remember that anxiety disorders just don't go away unless they're treated. Um, it's important to tell someone so you can get the help that you need. If a person continues to struggle with sadness or worry and ability to sleep or eat or just can't shut their brain off due to the overwhelming thoughts, then I usually suggest it's a good time to talk to somebody. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And then what are some subtle ways to help a friend who might be experiencing anxiety and might be embarrassed to share that with other people? Yeah, that's a great one. I think it's really important to remember that anxiety can look different for everybody. Um, I think the biggest thing to remember is as a friend, it's okay to know that we can't fix it, um, but we can encourage them to talk to their parents about getting help if they need it. And a lot of research shows that things like yoga, meditation, keeping a gratitude journal, and I always say like adding purposeful time versus numbing time are things that you can do on your downtime are great things that we can always recommend to a friend too. All right, thank you, that was perfect. And then a last like little on-spot question. What is um, maybe like a great idea or something people can do to try to keep positive during COVID? Yeah, that's a tough one because, um, again, you know, sometimes we're dealing with our own personal struggles and then right everywhere we turn, you know, social media and the television and everything seems to feel really heavy and negative right now. But the reality of it is, is I think we need to focus on ourselves at this time and use the opportunity to grow ourselves in this um, by, again, trying to bring in more positives um, and trying to, right, like not take in the energy of all the negatives. And so connecting with our support systems and our friends and, you know, just trying to find the best we can out of everything. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, Kelly. Absolutely. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day. And now on to some tips and tricks. All right, guys, we're getting ready to wrap up the show. But before I leave you guys for this week, I'm just going to give you guys tips on how to maybe help yourself calm down when you're starting to feel anxious or you're just having a really rough day. You can't stop th overthinking about things. These are things I use to help me do this. I'm sorry if they don't work for you. It's different for everybody. Anxiety will always be different for everybody. If I can at least give you guys one thing to help you out. That's my goal. Tip number one, listen to music. Music just, it's in itself, the reason why I love it so much is it makes me feel less alone. It makes me feel like there's people out there who are feeling what I'm feeling and know what I'm feeling. I don't feel like an alien in my own world. When I wanna calm down, I just lay down, listen to music, maybe put it through my Alexa, you know? 
Tip number two is watch a comfort TV show or movie. For those of you who don't know what a comfort TV show or movie is, it's that one like TV show or movie, or maybe there's a couple, that you just watch over and over again. You don't really bother like starting new so- shows or letting that go after you ended it. You just watch the show over and over and over again. My comfort TV shows are The Office, uh, Rick and Morty, the regular show. That's what I use sometimes to just ease the mind, distract it, like let it think about other things than um, what's making me feel anxious. Tip number three, incense or candles. I love incense. I love them. They make the room, I feel like, smell like nature-y. Uh, some people don't like incense though, so I'm suggesting maybe candles too. Candles really are soothing, like especially if you have a nice smelling one. Maybe if you're taking a bath, you can light some, or if you're reading or watching your comfort TV show or movie, like you can light an incense or a candle. Anything that just makes you feel calm when you smell. All right, my tip number four is tea. I know tea might be bland or boring to some people, but you really just have to try different types of tea. I like putting lemon in my tea. I like putting honey in my tea a lot. It really like nurtures the throat. I don't even know if that's a word. Flame me in the comments later. I don't know. I just like the feeling of drinking something warm. Maybe you're drinking coffee. Maybe you're drinking hot chocolate. Whatever floats your boat, just drink something warm, I guess. All right, my last tip, tip number five, is a therapy light. Um, maybe not many of you have this, probably nobody does, but I got it suggested to me through my therapist because he explained that in Michigan, obviously in the winter time, we don't get as much sunlight, and when we don't, we don't get as much vitamin D. Um, our dopamine levels are less, and we're tended to feel more anxious or sad. If you look at the therapy light, you just plug it in, um, and it shines this bright light and you don't have to stare right into it but if you just like stare like at it like I can't believe I just did that I was doing the motions okay if you just like stare at it and um, for like 15 20 minutes a day it can really help I'm gonna add this into therapy light actually so therapy light slash vitamin D drinks because vitamin D drinks let me tell you my therapist said it can really help with energizing me and making me feel less anxious and bringing those like happy juices out. I honestly agree. I've been drinking them for like a month or two and yeah, they don't help every day, but most of the time it does and it really does bring that energy and I love them. So I really suggest them. All right, you guys. So that's the end of my show right here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys maybe learned something today. Be kind to the mind and stay safe. Bye. Stress is a common health issue around the world, and creating art can help reduce stress. No matter how good of an artist you are, it can help give your mind a break from everything going on in your life. You are able to express so many emotions through art that you may not be able to express with words. Have you ever had that one math problem that you could not solve that made you so upset? Next time, put on some music and relax. Music can do a lot to reduce stress. It can help put your brain in a calm state and relax your mind. And then try to do whatever you were doing. At times like these where school is all online, school can be very stressful. Taking naps at times when you're stressed can help reduce stress and anxiety and help your body maintain a healthier state. Just a 30-minute nap can help reduce stress and anxiety. After a day of looking at screen doing schoolwork, it's good to give your eyes a break and go on a walk outside. By doing this for at least 10 minutes a day, it can bring your brain into a more calm state and help improve your memory and attention span. By doing this, it helps fight stress. Exercising can increase your overall health. It can also improve your mood and help you clear your mind. There are so many kinds of exercising you can do, from simple yoga, all the way to hardcore workouts. Doing it for half an hour a day will overall improve your well-being. Spending time with a pet can have a lot of health benefits people don't know about. Touch and movement are both very good ways to reduce stress. By petting and playing with your animals, you accomplish both of these things. It also helps you put in a more relaxed and calm state than you were before. Here are 
are some things you can do while you're quarantining? You can cook or bake something. You could read. You could draw something. Play cool math games. Cut or dye your hair. Put some outfits together. Write a story. Do a face mask. Start a new show. Take some pictures. Try some yoga. Paint your nails. Organize your drawers. Customize your home screen. Play an instrument. Take a personality quiz. Look at old yearbooks. Listen to music. Shop online, even if you don't end up buying anything. Play video games. Play card games or board games. Do a puzzle. Teach your pets new tricks. FaceTime your family and friends and sing a song. Thanks for watching. Wear a mask, social distance, and stay safe. Hi, I'm Gabby, and you're going to learn how to make a turkey. Now that you got your turkey all ready, you're gonna wash it very thoroughly and get all the insides out. Now we're gonna remove this extra skin on the turkey. Now we're gonna prepare the rub. For the rub, we use basil leaves, Himalayan salt, butter, garlic salt, and ground pepper. We take two tablespoons of butter, melt that in a bowl until it's melted, and then we're going to take our seasonings and add them into the rub. For the basil leaves, we are going to do one quarter teaspoon Also, with some black pepper. It doesn't have to be exact. You just put some of that in there. A few turns. Add some salt. And the last ingredient is garlic salt. Now what we're gonna do is I'm going to take a few pats of butter and just 
cut that off the butter. And you want to lift the skin. And get it up underneath the skin here. This will make your turkey super juicy. Now that you got the butter under the skin, you're going to pour all the rub over the entire skin of the turkey. the Reynolds oven bag. Now you just want to make sure that you're over the top of your pan and it's going to take two people to kind of get it in a bag. All right so usually people bake the turkey right side up, turkey breast up, but in our family, we cook it upside down because then the white meat is the juiciest instead of the dark meat. Then you want to place six half inch slits in the top of the bag so that it can vent. You're going to put the oven on 350 degrees. Now that you've got your turkey all seasoned up, you're going to put it in the oven for two to three hours. And in those hours, you can spend time with your family, as shown here. So now that your turkey is fully cooked, the internal temperature should be about 165 and the skin should be golden brown. Now I know what you're thinking. That looks so disgusting. I understand, it does. But the taste of it was immaculate. And it was a really fun experience, I must tell you that. Mm. Now that's some good turkey. All right guys, well, it looks like we're not gonna see you until the first week of January. So make sure to stay safe during the holiday season.